You may be thinking, Vanessa, what? You've never had a boyfriend? But you're so cute, you have long luscious hair, you seem super nice. I don't disagree with you, it is true. Never had a boyfriend. Now you might be thinking, okay, well, what's wrong with you? Why have you never had a boyfriend? <laughs> Twenty-three-year-old quote-unquote unicorn explains what happens with traditional values in modern society. Culture explained. Welcome to Manosphere Highlights Daily. We're gonna break down this interesting video of Vanessa, who I call a quote-unquote unicorn in the title of this video, based on the information that she provides in this video. We don't know her, but we're gonna assume that everything that she says in this video is true for educational purposes. Let's take a look at the definition of the word culture, so you know what we're highlighting in this video the way of life, especially the general customs and beliefs of a particular group of people at a particular time. Now it's time for us to dive into this and do what we have to do, because we men and we, we men and we, I have very traditional Mexican parents and growing up, my dad didn't like us to date, which makes sense. Let's stop it right there. I'm a sociology fan and that's why I study that she. And one of the first lessons you learn is that your family, your home is where you get your first education. Your values and standards are instilled at home. That's why your family's reputation was very important. People knew whether you came from a good family or not. And she talks about traditional parents, raising her with traditional values. So dating is something serious to her family and she takes this standard with her into this world. In high school, I remember having this guy that I really liked and I wanted to go on dates with him and, you know, have him really be my boyfriend. And my dad was just like, no, like, I don't want you seeing anyone. And I really value my dad's opinion. And I listened to him. I was like, okay, like he knows best. Like, I really didn't give my parents any trouble growing up. Another broken backboard. Pay attention because he's dropping gems here. She values her father's opinion. She listens to him because he knows best. One of the things that a father does is protect his family. Protection also means preventing you from getting into trouble. So when dad says you cannot date, he's protecting you from boys who don't know how their DICKs work yet. From boys who don't have much to offer you yet. From guys that will distract you from what is important right now and that is growing up into an adult woman that can make the right decisions for herself. One of the most important things they have done to destabilize the black community is to take the father out of the household and make sure he is not respected. That's why it's not a coincidence that it's black men that went their own way first. We get more respect from other women than our own women. And now, this foolishness is blowing over and it's affecting all men in modern society. Modern women are taught not to respect men. So what happens with a woman that is raised with traditional values? Let's pick it up from the point where she goes to college and she's ready to date. Yes, I can finally start dating. Like there's so many kids at this school. There has to be one boy that I would want to date. And freshman year hit me like a ton of bricks. That's not gonna happen. That's not in store for you, Vanessa. And I'll tell you why. I think I just had such a culture shock when it came to hookup culture in college. I knew it was a thing but I was so inexperienced when I started college that it really freaked me out. Ah, remember the definition of culture? She goes to college and she experienced a culture shock, a feeling of confusion felt by someone visiting a country or place that they do not know. Mm, this is gold. How much proof do you need? This lady is in the minority. So when we talk about modern women, of course we don't mean all women, but we do talk about most women. And that's where the culture shock comes from. That's why you don't bring your foreign woman back here. You'll mess her up. You know, I would make out with guys here and there, but as soon as they wanted to like go back to their dorms, I was very confident in saying no because I knew I wasn't ready and I knew that's not what I wanted out of, you know, a relationship at that point. Like I wanted to be in a relationship before I started having sex. Like that was my mindset going into college. Well, I'm gonna be super honest in this. But yeah, I was super confident in saying no and I really put my foot down. I wasn't gonna let any boy push me around or bulldoze me or try to pressure me into doing anything that I didn't wanna do. Did you hear that? Again, 
and I really put my foot down. I wasn't gonna let any boy push me around or bulldoze me or try to pressure me into doing anything that I didn't wanna do. Nothing, absolutely nothing is gonna happen without a woman's consent. Because if it does, we're talking about something else. She's making out with some guys here and there, but when they wanna hit it, she decides if that's gonna happen or not. That's why I stopped talking to these females a long time ago, pretending women have no control over their own actions and their own bodies. The foolishness. Now look what happens when she doesn't give it up. I quickly noticed that when I would say no to certain boys, they would change. They started to be mean and annoyed and like frustrated and bothered. Like I had inconvenienced them for not having sex with them. And that really bothered me. I really hated that. That made me feel that you being nice to me all of those times were literally just to get me in the sack. It's so grimy to me. I just hated that. <laughs> <laughs> Cause and effect. Now you don't want to give it up, but your girlfriends do. And the guys that you're dealing with are the guys that have access to these girlfriends of yours. And like I've said before, Nothing is gonna happen without a woman's consent. So what do you think is gonna happen if the majority of women decide to give up the punani without marriage, without engagement, without being in a serious relationship? The value of punani crashes and you not giving it up is gonna make these guys feel a certain way about it because they're used to getting the punani at this low value level. Sophomore year, I kind of had a different mentality. If any of my family members watch this, you can skip this part or you could just not watch this video, it's totally fine, I won't get mad, but... Behold, brethren, because our little unicorn is about to experience the inevitable. <laughs> Sophomore year, I quickly realized that, you know what, if I wait to have a boyfriend to have sex, I'm never gonna have sex. And that's something that I didn't want. <laughs> I was, you know, starting to feel like I was ready, that I just wanted to get it over with, to be honest. Hookup culture is so prevalent in college. It truly did feel like everyone was just having sex. Not that I felt left out or that I needed to prove anything because it's not like when I had sex, I like went and told the world, but it was just kind of my personal thing of like, I went all of freshman year still very confident that that's not what I wanted and I truly waited until I was like, oh, okay, like I feel more comfortable in myself, I know exactly what I want, and this is like the time. Our little unicorn has decided that it's time for her to be deflowered, not the way she once upon a time wished to be deflowered. Her traditional values hold no merit in western modern times, for she is a woman and women do naturally long for some D-I-C-K. The saga continues. So, did the deed, you know, it was totally what you would expect. I don't regret it because it's, it was totally my decision. I felt very in control, if that makes sense. Again, it was just another year of just me having like meaningless flings with guys after that. You could argue in college that I really did it to myself of why I was single, but I truly felt like, oh, I'm not meeting anyone anyway. This is pure gold. How much proof do you need? It's not that she isn't getting attention from guys that want to be in a serious relationship. However, she is not interested in them. She doesn't want these guys. And the guys that she's actually interested in are the guys that most women are interested in. And the dude that deflowered her was probably one of those guys. Let me take you back to this clip real quick. I mean, I'm a person who cannot have sex with everyone. You should impress me. Or if you're going to be a fuck boy, please be hot as hell so I can at least show you to my girlfriends. Please, I'm begging you. <laughs> women are single because they reject most of the guys. But these women will smash Chad and Tyrone and let their friends know. I don't know. There was only one person in college where I was like, wow, I might actually date you. Like, I would be your girlfriend if you asked me. And we were in the talking stages for about four months. And I feel like four months is a good area to really be like, okay, is this going somewhere or we should probably stop? if it's not going anywhere. And that's how I 
viewed the relationship. We started talking and a month in was like, I know I like you. I see this going somewhere. If you don't like me like that or if you don't want a relationship, like please let me know right now because I don't want to waste your time and I don't want my time wasted. In my experience, Latinas would always let me know when they were serious. But she talks about liking only one guy in college. Only one. This lady is cute, right? Do you think that the only guy she likes doesn't have hotter ladies as an option? It's like, yeah, like I definitely think it's too soon, but I do see this going somewhere and like I want to be with you and all these things. And so I was like, all right, cool, fair enough. Like appreciate the honesty. If it's too early, like we can continue seeing each other and see where this goes. Like two, three, four months roll by and we're still at that like, I don't know what we are stage. I want someone who knows 100% that they want to be with me. You know, like doesn't everyone, like any doubt whatsoever, like you shouldn't be with that person, right? The fact that he was telling my friends that he just didn't know yet, that we weren't a couple, that we didn't have any labels just made me think that he wasn't confident in us or he didn't like me enough to make me his girlfriend like he was getting all the benefits without any of the labels and i just hated that why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free what women don't understand is that they've liberated us if you can do whatever you want that means we can also do whatever we want and some of us don't want to get married and some of us don't want to commit and some of us don't want to put you on a pedestal and this is what you'll have to deal with when you're only dealing with men that are in high demand. Because that's the point where I started feeling used and not appreciated and not valued. That's where I draw the line. But I don't consider that like a relationship because he could not commit to me. I didn't tell people he was my boyfriend, so I don't count that, but it was an experience. It was something that I took a lot from. I learned a lot. So it was an entanglement, right? <laughs> Welcome to modern day society. Let's be honest, there are some good women out there. And when you're lucky to find one, you still have to deal with the foolishness of Western culture that will greatly impact your relationship. We just spread the word and you decide what you will do with it. Vanessa, thanks for sharing your story. We're gonna make a part two because there are some more gems in this video. That's a wrap for today. Manosphere, we working. This video has officially been highlighted.